Hello neighbor, I'm Robert Burns of Sound Off Louisiana here with yet another feature for you today. Now the lady over to my right probably needs no introduction because we've done about five or six series with her, but this is Nelda Doral and we are actually in her Iberia Cosmetology Institute. We are standing in the main classroom and we're about to give you a little tour of the facility uh, and allow Nelda to give you a little personal upfront home tour of her facility and I'm just going to stand behind the camera and I'll be get, I'll be holding it as we take that tour. So now I'll turn it over to you and let you say a few words, and then we're going to go up front and start touring your entire facility. Excellent, Robert. Thank you. I appreciate appreciate you so much. First of all, I'd like to say thanks to Mr. Um, Charles and David Coates, um, who have been helping me, and I'm trying to get my school back open. And American for Prosperity, John Kay, and um, Lee McGrath with Institute for Justice. I look forward to uh, working with these uh, organizations to try and get my school in, back up and running because they're for economic pro prosperity for all people. Um, Mr. Uh, we went to a uh, feature to, to a function today at the Petroleum Club in Lafayette, Louisiana, where we met with Mr. Barra, who's the house speaker, and Mr. Barra said that he would definitely look into and help me get my school running back up and running. We met other people, other um, politicians who are equally as interested in finding out exactly what has happened to this school. This school has been around in the community for over 40 years. First it was, like I said, it was... Uh, it became Shapes Academy. After leaving Shapes Academy, it was transferred who, um, to the Neal Institute, who is a VEDA, who owns a, a, own a VEDA, that is, who is right, who is the chairman of the Cosmetology Board right now at this time uh, of the Neal Institute. His name is Edwin Neal. I spoke to Edwin Neal. And now uh, the school was sold to me, and I have been in operation for now for 13 years, traveling to New Iberia to try and help out this deprived economic area. And so we would like we would like to get this school back up and running so that it offers an opportunity, an economic opportunity for these children to get an education. We tried to get the natural hair care braiders passed so that the children that are in high school, they can possibly develop a trade while they're in high school so that when they get out of school, they can go to work and earn a, or have an earning income to help support themselves and possibly put themselves through school so that the, the, the burden of the cost of a college education won't be put on the, the state, the family, or federal funds. This was a private institute where the students paid their own tuition. It, it created responsibility for these students. So they didn't have to go to the federal government and say, give me money, give me money to put me through school. They were paying their own way, which developed great character for these students. Instead, the, the board, did, the cosmetology board, didn't appreciate this because they wanted to be able to make their $20,000 uh, uh, off of each student, 20000 times 20 students, $400,000 a month instead of having these children develop character and responsibility, which would make them better, better human beings and pay taxes, purchase houses, and have a family, and develop the real American dream by participating in, in, in developing your own education, getting your, paying, for, paying your way through, basically. Pay your own way. We're not, we, we don't want no handouts. We don't want welfare. We don't want any of that. We want to be able to pay our own way, even if we have to find a little part-time job, even if, if we have to braid a little hair on the side. So the next time the session comes along, make sure you vote to pass natural hair care braiding. And I thank Representative Emerson of Karen Crow. She's a Republican, but she was the one who brought this forward, this natural hair care bill. A lot of people think that, oh, 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 we don't want to support the Republican. But I mind you, it was a white Republican, Miss Emerson, out of Karen Crow, Louisiana, who tried to get these little African Americans a little job by practicing a trait that they're born with. They're born with knowing how to braid hair. No school teaches them how to braid hair. Anywhere you look, you can find braiders all over the country, people braiding hair. You think all those people that are getting their hair braided, getting their hair braided in the salon? No way. Salons hardly ever braid hair. These girls are already practicing this trait braiding hair. So I, I want to encourage you 
to work as hard as you can with Prosperity for Americans, with Mr. Coates, with, uh, with deregulating this, some of this industry, and with Lee McGrath to get these little girls, these black African American girls, the, 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 the uh, opportunity, the opportunity to earn a living by braiding hair. All righty. I think you can see that Nelda is quite fat passionate uh, about this particular issue. And uh, I think she's very succinctly uh, told you where she stands on it. So we're going to devote the remaining eight, nine minutes or so of this video toward giving you a tour of, the, of her school. And you'll see exactly uh, what this board has shut down. I think you're going to be stunned when you do. We'll be right back with you. All right, folks, we're about to take a tour of the Iberia Institute of Cosmetology. We are standing right outside of Nelda Doral's closed-down school. Now, you know, used to, she could proudly have this little flashing neon light saying open. But thanks to the State Board of Cosmetology, that's no, case. That's no longer the case. And it's been that way for a while. This is just a street scene, and you can see the immediate surroundings. And uh, we're going to go right on in right now and have Miss Nelda Doral give us a tour of her school. Robert, this, this is a school. You're welcome to come in. This parking lot used to be filled with cars. Uh -huh. And after State Board came in and decided that they, they, they were going to shut it down for no real reasons, a, a, a case that they got together and, as I've said in the past, and plotted to shut the school down to, to prevent uh, competition basically with the federal trade. I contacted the Federal Trade Commission, like I said, to prevent a uh, uh, competition because of the large schools. As long as they keep New Iberia School closed down, they don't have to worry about the students traveling past from New Iberia to Lafayette. They want to keep this area deprived. This is not the first time they closed down the school. When it was Angelo's up the street, they he ended up closing down for the same reason. Mm -hmm. And th then it was Shapes Academy. They bought Shapes Academy out. They do not want a school to operate in this area. Ah, okay. So this this is pretty much the lobby, I would assume. And, exactly. And got a little receptionist stand right exactly. over here. So and, we'll, yes. you just tell us where. I know our the main classroom is right yes. over here to the right. So. Okay, what we're going we're gonna to do, we, this is a study hall that we use. Okay. Whenever um, in the afternoons, if the students want to come in and study, they study in this area or in the morning we come in and we do some theory. And when a student first comes to school, they already know what they're up against, Robert. Mm -hmm. On this board right here, it says, in order to pass your national test, your national test is composed of 50% hair care services, 30% scientific concepts, 10% um, skin care, which has been changed, changed, and 10% nail services. One of the complaints that uh, Sherry Marks with the State Board of Cosmetology said, oh, something's wrong with your curriculum. Oh, something's wrong with the amount that you teach. I don't have a choice to say how much I'm going to teach. The National Institute of Cosmetology tell me how much has to be taught in each one of these modules with the, the information that the student needs to pass the test. And the... the, the um, the curriculum is already designed. We get this curriculum, the, cosmet the cosmetology curriculum, comes from the National Institute of Cosmetology. The tests are already, already prescribed. The theory is already here. What you need to teach, what you need to say, what areas you need to cover, it's already there. The lesson plans are already done. We, we tweak it a little bit mm -hmm. to, to, to uh, make it coincide with what, what, what area your uh, students are a little bit more interested in, but we still have to cover the 50, 30, 10, 10 ratio for the information. This is a aesthetic curriculum that the school offer. We not only offer cosmetology, we offer aesthetics too. Mm -hmm. So the students could come and get an aesthetics license in seven months. I got you. Okay, we were putting teachers out there. There's 600 teachers in the state of Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I say. It would be good for this natural hair care braiding to pass because these 600 teachers in the state of Louisiana would be able to teach these children braiding. Uh -huh. And guess what? They hollering sanitation, sanitation, sanitation there is no sanitation problem because these same 600 teachers they're already in the schools teaching sanitation wow. so there would be no problem okay. that's just the creative problem the state board has made up oh, okay and then we have the natural hair we have I'm sorry we have the the um, the nail tech curriculum mm -hmm. where it uh, this comes from the National Institute too mm -hmm. these students they they come in and, and, and they get 
500 hours in the nail care department. Mm -hmm. This book is already prescribed, saying what you need to teach them, vocabulary development. So it's already there. They can't say that a school is not offering what it needs to offer. Okay. They say that we're supposed to have videos. If the student don't get in the textbook, they get it in the videos. Okay, and so this is the main classroom, correct? Th that is our study hall. We have two large classrooms in the back, which state board, the state board title 46 says that it has to be 400 square feet. Mm -hmm. And so those two classrooms are in the back, and I'll walk you back there. That'll be. This is the clinic floor, okay. which is required by state board. You have 40 stations, and that's what state board prescribed, that you have to have 40 stations, and these are the 40 stations. Well, and let me ask you this. You've been you've been shut down for quite a while now, am I correct? Since April the 13th, 2016. You got the exact date. April, <laughs> yes, April yes. the 13th of 2016. Exactly. We're filming this in July of 2017. Exactly. So for 14 months, exactly. all of this... Has yeah. sat idle, and you've had exactly. to, and you've had to pay lease on this I've building. I had to pay lease, utilities, water bill. Wow. Because I knew that this was a like Miss Brentley said, this was a tragedy that was done. It's been a tragedy. So I was willing to make the sacrifice, even through even through my economic uh, economic shortages that they caused to keep this building. I and understand. other put people believe in it too. That's why I'm still here. I understand and, exactly. Yeah. You know, but I mean, just look at this, folks. Exactly. Just look at this and look at what the Louisiana State Board of Cosmetology just sent a letter saying you are closed. Exactly. Right. You continue on. This is your show. Okay, this is this is the area where the students perform their mannequin work. Their mannequin work that's prescribed for them in the past, their practical part of the State Board of Cosmetology. I already have it mapped on, on, on the mannequin heads. We have it sketched out. So no student is ever lost saying, oh, I didn't know how to do this. I didn't know how to do this. This is the haircut. This is your guideline. Oh, we didn't know how to do the haircut. We didn't. Yes, we walked through this information with them to show them exactly what they need to do. Mm -hmm. This is a chemical combination. This is this section that's a fall highlight this is a brick set and this is the packet that's always available the requirements the passion louisiana state board of cosmetology uh -huh. we get this from state board so for them to say oh the students didn't know this the student didn't know that that's very much incorrect okay these are the signs that we have to post saying student work only supervised by instructor it says supervised by instructor. There are times when you may have to go help that student now because no student learn at the same rate, Rob. Right. Some people learn learn a little oh, bit faster. I think I'd be a little slow, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. But This is the shampoo area. It okay. requires six shampoo bowls. It looks like you've got six to me. Rob, we have eight. We have two in the classrooms in the back. Okay. As we go to the classroom, you're going to find out we have more than what the state requires. Okay. This is the color where they learn to formulate that color, the color world of colors. Mm -hmm. So they can't say that we didn't have what was needed. This is the break room, Robert. Okay. The take their break. Students they take break. All right. Yes, they say you have to have 40 lockers. We have more than 40 lockers, Robert. This mm -hmm. is the lockers. These are the mannequin heads. They say you have to have X mannequin heads. We have five times the number <laughs> of mannequin heads that are needed and more in the closet. Okay. So they can't say it was an old rundown school. It didn't have the proper material. Everything was here working. Mm -hmm. This is the, uh, the dispensary where we have to have the shampoo, uh, the uh, wash and dry so that they can learn responsibility, cleanliness, sanitation again. Well, and that's one thing I want to emphasize right now. Uh, you, you have that actually posted on doors to where, you know, anybody Reminders. can't, yeah, exactly, properly disinfect all tools. It prevents cross-contamination. Exactly. I, I've never been in another, cos well, one other cosmetology school, but I didn't see this, you know, exactly. to where it was staring you right in the face, to where you, I didn't mean to stop you to where you no, keep, okay. keep right on, but I wanted to point that out. Exactly, I felt it to be most important that they know exactly. Well, what yeah, it's obvious you didn't just scribble that up day before yesterday. No, 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 no. This is the this is the first classroom. We use this for the the nail the nail curriculum, and it's the 400 square footage that the state of uh, Louisiana State Board of Cosmetology they have to be present. That's the other extra shampoo bowl I told you about that we have right there in the area, so that the students are able to clean and disinfect their tools, Robert. I, I understand and now. Though. Every curriculum, Robert, the students know where they need to be at at, at all times. This is a chart that tells the students on a daily basis exactly what's going, what's going to be being taught that particular day. Mm -hmm. So if they want to go ahead and read a day before and, and get a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more information, a little bit more practice, they have this chart. Mm -hmm. You know, they were saying that the students didn't know what to expect. 
It's mapped out for every curriculum. Well, and I, I must say, this is the first classroom. It sure looks awful nice to me. Yes, so. and Robert, you see, in every area, we have supervised student work only. That's a requirement by Louisiana State Board of Cosmetology. Mm -hmm. It's in every area. Well, and I want to, as we're going back, I want to I want to hit that area uh, because you mentioned it in one of the last meetings that mm -hmm. I videotaped you, mm -hmm. and you had to forgive me. I'm, I'm, folks, I'm That's seeing okay. this for the first time. Oh, right. uh, this is my first tour as well, yes. so I've only seen it just a few minutes before we, you know, launch yes. this video. Exactly. Uh, but uh, I'm assuming this must be the area for pedicures. Yeah, this is a pedicure so that the students can practice on the clients rather than most most cosmetology schools don't have pedicure chairs, so the students can actually pra practice on the real client uh -huh. in, the, in the pedicure chair itself. Okay. And this is our second pedicure room. Um, and it the, and its door clearly talks about how the cleanup and so forth. Uh, tools, uh -huh. Exactly. The steps of de decontamination. Mm -hmm. This is the second thing. See, it says it's even labor. Theory classroom. I didn't just put this up. This has been here since day one. Mm -hmm. Theory classroom. Like I said, this has always been a school. It was the old Howard Brothers. It was a retail <laughs> store. Uh -huh. But it's always been a school since since then. Mm -hmm. This is the second classroom. State board required that you have the anatomy charts. We have the anatomy charts. They require that you have a library, which is to the left of me. Uh, you have to have the ample uh, space, the 400 square feet. You have to have a, a desk. Mm -hmm. You have to have uh, the, the desk for the, the teacher. You have to have lockers for the students. Mm -hmm. The requirements here. We have to disinfect the proper sanitation. Mm -hmm. You know, the barber side. Mm -hmm. We have the, the, bowl, the, the bowl for clean cleaning the tools or mm -hmm. washing your hands so sanit sanitation is very important and by the way we do have hot running water well, you know it's interesting you bring that out because yes. you actually asked me to make a public records request for the inspection report for a new school that was open and I made it yes. and it turns out that the notation was made in the inspection report that there was no running hot water in the restroom of this facility and it was cited as a deviation uh, from an acceptable practice of being opened, yet the school was opened anyway. Exactly. In fact, I've got the video when the school was open. Yes. Would you happen to volunteer who that school was owned by? Uh, I or, think that school was owned by a, a it was tr it was originally a school in Sicilian from what I understand mm -hmm. when I read it and then it moved to, to Bro Bridge mm -hmm. it's a, uh, one of the career schools I think it is okay. Robert All right. and uh, I, I remember it being a career school which I'm for them getting an education in a career school but make the same rules the for, same everybody. for everybody exactly. If, if I have to have hot running water they have to have hot running water sanitation is sanitation exactly. the warm water is running flow water decreases the amount of germs on the hand. Exactly. It's a sanitation, a sanitation, uh, 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 sanitized, disinfect, sterilization. That's nationwide, mm -hmm. worldwide, everybody has to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is the area where we um, practice. Oh, I'm before. sorry. That's okay. This is the, I, gotta, I guess I got to look look a little <laughs> bit at where I'm going. That's okay. This is the aesthetics area, Robert. We have an aesthetics curriculum too, mm -hmm. where the students can come for 750 hours. Then they're licensed to go out and do eyelashes, makeup, um, facials, back facials, massage, back massages, and things mm -hmm. like that. And that's the curriculum we offer too. Okay. And I'm trying to see, going from memory on, from what was about 10 minutes ago, uh, where was the area that, ah, there must be, no, Which no, one? I'm looking for the area where they apparently criticized, there we go, mm -hmm. here we go, I'd like to brought, bring attention to this area, in yeah. fact, I want to step back, all right, this is, Miss, this is your office, exactly. correct, exactly. and there was a statement that you were leaving students unattended, exactly. so is my understanding that, I'm going to back away a little right. bit here, so a student might be here, on a correct, and you may have had to go on into your yes. office for a short period, which yes. you pointed out in that uh, presentation you made to the state board, it's glass. Yes. I can see everything they're exactly. doing. I did not leave them exactly. alone and to their own. And exactly. I think, you know, one reason I like to have cameras is, you know, it doesn't lie. It doesn't right. talk back. Here mm -hmm. it is, folks. So you can see she would be right in the line of sight. Yes. to be observing for that short exactly. time she may have needed to go into the office 
Yet they cited that as being one exactly. of the reasons for, you know, ostensibly shutting you down. Exactly. You know, and so. Robert, this is another uh, uh, um, thing I want to bring to your attention. They said that I needed to go out and buy a new time clock. Okay, and I do remember that. A, a very expensive clock. one, if yes. I remember right. It's one that possibly scanned the eyes. and Biometric, and I think they call the, them. Yes, the, finger, the hand prints and everything. Mm -hmm. So I went out and spent this money. This, this thing was... Close to a thousand dollars, I think, oh. was by the time I got everything, mm -hmm. everything that I needed, uh, needed to get with this time clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was interesting to me was when I looked on Facebook at the other schools, <laughs> they were using the dinosaur. Uh huh. The, the same thing that you were using that, or even well, I, I had changed up from the dinosaur eight years ago. <laughs> I had purchased four clocks in between this time clock. Uh -huh. But they were still using the dinosaur. I mean, the big old, big old, big old time clock. Mm -hmm. And these schools are accredited receiving federal, federal funds. funds. So they should have been the ones that, who had to have this biometric. Oh, so this. Uh -huh. Yes, that's it. The new time clock. Wearer. So you went out and got it. I went got the time clock. And they clock. still have not opened you back they up. They still have not opened me back up. And wow. they said, but And, and that being, being said too, Robert, when the students come in, they have to clock in. And then they have to sign in in this area right here. Mm -hmm. So then they, when they say they don't, they didn't get their hours, they told State Board, oh, we didn't get our hours, we didn't get our hours. Either you didn't clock in and you didn't sign in. The First of all, the, ins the previous inspection reports, they've updated it now, didn't even have a time clock on it. Alrighty. All it required was for you to sign in. Well, but, yes. Well, Mr. Al, I want to really thank you for giving us that tour today. I'll give you, give you about 30 seconds to give a little wrap-up, if you will. And uh, we're going to get this on out, and we're going to see about, I mean, uh, uh, how Speaker Barra indicated yes. we're going to get something done about this. That's what he told you. Uh, exactly. If you notice, folks, that was the lead-in uh, photo that we had. Uh, exactly. Mr. Al standing side-by-side -side with Speaker Barra. Uh, we have previously profiled her standing side-by-side -side with Governor Edwards. Mm -hmm. I'll let you volunteer if anything's been done by the governor's well, office. Well, no, to Robert, I, I, when, when it's first started to develop, I, I, I talked to Governor Edwards. I said, Governor Edwards, there's some things that are going on that's just just not according to the policy and procedure, not according to, according to Title 46. Mm -hmm. So he said, well, I need you to talk to Ellen Palmatier, and she will help you. Mm -hmm. I talked backwards and forward. I emailed, uh, talked to her on the telephone, Ellen Palmatier. She said, we're going to get you back up and running. It never happened. It never happened. Then she okay. referred us to uh, Ms. Brentley. Ms. Brentley. Ms. Brentley uh -huh. said that this this is a tragedy with this board. Well, I, I was on that conference yes. call, so I can said, attest. Morris, that's the word she used, she tragedy. She said tragedy. She said, Morris, oh. Uh, she said, but Candelos is definitely no better than to do what she has done because... And what she's referring to, for those who yes. haven't seen the previous video, they put in a, a statute that required, if you had to have a minimum of two instructors. This is, despite the spacious accommodations you've seen, you typically only had, what, six to eight students, give or take, your average exactly. was about eight. Uh, and, and this, in my opinion, and I think, I think common sense would dictate this, that statute was put in place for the exact purpose of running small schools out of business. Exactly. The old rule said you only had to have a second instructor if you had 20 or more students. Exactly. Well, the problem is they went in and they, did, they never promulgated this into the rules, mm -hmm. and therefore it's unenforceable. Miss Brindley said that herself, mm -hmm. and she said what happened with you was a tragedy. But, I mean, the whole issue of needing a mandatory second instructor when you may have as few as three students, mm -hmm. what other purpose can that serve other than to put small schools such as yourself out of business. And, and let me just say this, correct me if I'm wrong, but the composition of that cosmetology board is today and always has been mm -hmm. almost exclusively comprised of very large exactly. school owners. All right, now you can say anything you'd like in closing and we'll consider this a wrap. Okay, excellent. Well, I just want to thank, uh, like I said, we talked to uh, guest uh, House Speaker Barra, who, who was very interested, said that I will definitely help you get your school back up and running. And it's, it's, a, it's really sad and it is a tragedy if for two years I had to go through this waiting period for something that the board felt that felt that we should close her down to prevent competition. And I think that the fe I, I would like the Federal Trade Commission to really look into this because, yeah, it may have happened to me and I may have survived it, but there are children out there who have dreams to become a school owner. And we don't want to be a dream killer for Louisiana. Louisiana does not, does not 
this does not dis deserve the type of practices that Louisiana State Board of Cosmetology is operating right now. I was disappointed that Edwin Neal, when John Edward Bell put Edwin Neal there, who owns the Neal Institute, didn't clean up the board, didn't follow through with helping him, but instead he went went to went to try and get the fees increased on the cosmetology. Uh, I have a forty percent. Forty percent that would have generated. That would have generated three hundred thousand exactly. dollars a to year. To building, Steve said. Well, but it's interesting. He didn't say increase the license, the, the fees on the school owners. Ah, and that made him four hundred thousand dollars a month. Ah, you gonna increase the fees on these little bitty people? Uh -huh. These little cosmetologists, little nail techs, little aesthetic people. Forty percent. Why you didn't increase increase it up on the big people who are these large school owners who are making up to four hundred thousand dollars a month? Well, Come on, let's be fair about it. Well, I think that's an excellent point. That was a great point to close on. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Rowell, I just want to thank you. It's been a pleasure to come out. It was a pleasure to be with you over at the legislative wrap up luncheon with Speaker Barra, uh, and it's been certainly a pleasure to come down here. And you've graciously allowed us to tour your facility, and we're going to be doing everything we can to get Nelda Doral and the Iber. Institute of Cosmetology back up and running to allow some, because as I understood it, most of your clients were pretty disadvantaged, uh, and yes. we want to give them that opportunity exactly. that you were providing them, and we believe that we're going to get that done. Thank you so much, Thank Nelda. You, it's Mr. always Burns. a pleasure to visit I with really you. I really appreciate you coming down here to, 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 to take an interest in these people's future. You're quite welcome. Thank you so much.